Our first uh, action will be the, uh, the agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? Now, hearing none, are there, is there a motion to approve the agenda? Second. Vote. Oh. Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the second item is the approval of the minutes of August the 28th, 2012. Uh, do we have any comments or changes to the meeting minutes of August 28th? There's a spelling, a spelling on the second page. First paragraph should be angle of the front yard lot instead of ankle. Uh, yeah, I noticed that too. In fact, in the, in the second paragraph, it's, it's, it's not anything we have to motion. It's just a correction. Yeah, just a correction. Yeah, it's, in the second paragraph, there's a the same the same mistake. Okay. So it's just instead of ank ankle, it's ankle. <laughs> well, it's but, but, the sub, that but the substance is good. Spell I mean, check. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's, that's fine. Spell check won't catch that. Yep. <laughs> it happens. I move approval of the minutes as corrected. Support? I approve. I Open carries. Okay, now we get into the meat of the, uh, the meeting that we're here for is uh, appeal number 12-004. Uh, what we're, uh, normally our format is that the appellants come up and uh, make their presentation and uh, then we get into an explanation of uh, from our consultant, Brian Gordon, about what, what it is that uh, uh, the appeal is for. But what I want to do is uh, have the appellants come up and introduce themselves and their address, and then we'll get in with Brian Gordon's uh, information that he's going to give us. So if you can come up to the podium. Uh, the Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Robert Howie. Reside at 2945 Riverside Drive, Trenton, Michigan. I'm the project architect. And good evening. I'm David Quam. And uh, I'm the owner of 22565 West River, requesting this uh, uh, meeting today. Thank you. Yeah, briefly, uh, your, uh, what, you're, uh, what you're going to do, just tell us what your project is. Um, we um, purchased the 22565 West River property, and we're hoping to rebuild on that site within basically the current um, footprint of the home and there's a an 18 foot um, oh, setback requirement yes, that we are asking for um, a little bit of relief based on the current uh, builds on either side of our property okay so you're actually going to uh, tear down the existing structure that's the current plan yes and then rebuild Yes. Okay, uh, if you just want to stay there, and Brian, you know, Brian, you want to make your presentation and give us the, the facts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just prepared a, a brief PowerPoint for us this evening uh, in hopes that uh, I can give a quick overview uh, and then obviously take any questions that you may have before we go back to the applicant. Uh, and then to the members of the public who have shown up tonight as well. So, quick overview of the site. Um, what we're looking at today, as you noted, is the property at 22525 West River Road. The site is on the east side of West River, uh, nearest cross street being Ferry Road, which is to the south. Uh, I oriented this aerial photo such that it's looking east, so to follow it, north is actually to the left, because I felt it gave you a little bit better look at the property. <coughs> Uh, I can go back to this at any point if anybody wants to look at the existing conditions. Um, the specific request before you this evening is a 3.8 foot variance from the township spacing requirement. And what that is, is you have a footnote uh, in section 3.5 which states that principal buildings, i.e. residences, in the R1A district must have 18 feet minimum between residences. In this instance, the applicant uh, is proposing a spacing of 14.2 feet, 
thus the 3.8 foot variance. Uh, pertinent sections of the ordinance that you may want to consider uh, addressing this evening are 3.5 as well as 23.5, uh, which outlines the review criteria upon which you are to make a decision. The next slide is a quick look at the site plan. I want to point out just a couple of things for you. Um, obviously, the, the dashed, darker lines, that's the property boundary. If you can follow the cursor, I don't know. Does that show okay for everybody? If you see the cursor? Okay. Yeah. The, uh, the existing home to the north would be here. Existing home to the south is here. And if you follow this uh, darker, dashed line inside the property, this is the perimeter of the existing residence. Uh, and again, I know the orientation is different, but if I go back to the aerial, you can see sort of how that residence lays out. A uh, couple of things to point out, which I'll uh, reiterate here shortly, but the existing residence provides an 11.5 foot setback from the north property line, which results in a 17.5 foot spacing from the existing residence to the north. Uh, that's non-conforming per your current ordinance. Obviously, as I noted, that's an 18 foot requirement. So they're a half foot off in terms of existing condition. On the south side, uh, it's actually uh, a little bit worse in terms of the, the extent of the nonconformity. The, uh, the applicant has a seven and a half foot side yard, while the neighbor has uh, about a six and a half foot setback, which is, uh, which is actually matching what's proposed before you this evening. So the established spacing is 14.2 feet, and the proposed residence would match that. So literally, you can see here, the proposed residence does not extend any closer to the south plot line than does the existing residence. Conversely, the proposed residence on the north side uh, actually improves the situation by providing that additional half foot that they are currently deficient. So uh, again, as a result of the proposed project, they would actually be eliminating a non-conforming condition from the north side. So in essence, they would be meeting that 18 foot spacing from the north. I can go back to this at any point too, if anybody wants to see the site plan. Just a quick overview of the, uh, the ordinance requirements that are in place tonight. As I noted uh, earlier, footnote six of section 3.5 requires an 18 foot spacing between principal buildings. Uh, as proposed, one side is 18, the other side is 14.2, thus the variance. Section 23.5B lays out the 14, yes, there are 14 review standards upon which you are to make your decision. Uh, many of them are similar, uh, and really the, the keys are uh, identifying a practical difficulty, demonstrating uh, items such as substantial justice, fairness to property owners, um, not impacting the neighbors or the neighborhood, uh, and obviously items like not causing a safety hazard, uh, not having any nuisance related factors. So but again, I can go back to this if anybody needs, but this is just a, an overview of really what we're looking for. So with that being said, uh, my last slide here, I just want to hit on uh, some of the key points uh, that I feel are, are important to address tonight. Uh, these are all taken right from my review letter, uh, which was included in your review packets. Uh, and I believe sent to the applicant as well. I believe they have a copy of this in advance. So as I've noted, current residence is not conforming on both sides, 17 and a half foot spacing to the north, 14.2 to the south. Uh, as a result of the project, the north side would comply, south side would maintain that same spacing. Uh, all other dimensional standards are met. All other setback requirements are met as well as the uh, floor area and lot coverage ratios are all in place. So this is the only issue from a zoning standpoint uh, that we have to deal with. In terms of the current building being non-conforming, uh, Article 18 of your zoning ordinance, which outlines uh, your non-conforming provisions, part of the intent of those provisions is to eliminate and or reduce non-conformity over time. Um, based upon that intent, we feel that the request before you this evening at least partially addresses that by removing the non-conforming status on the spacing from the north side. And I think it's important to note too, and I don't know that this came through uh, clearly in my letter, but not only does that mean the current 
residents that we're dealing with is nonconforming. It also means the residents to the north is nonconforming. So in essence, that spacing requirement, one is impacting the other by removal of this and, and execution of the proposal, we're actually eliminating two nonconforming conditions when you think about the adjacent property owner as well, because that's a restriction that's placed upon them also. Uh, in terms of the actual requirement, um, this has been in place for some time. The, the general intent behind the spacing was you have it in the R1A and R1B districts, you have minimum side yard setbacks of 6 feet and 12 feet. And the idea behind the spacing requirement was essentially that properties would alternate 6 and 12 foot side yards. So if you can follow me talking with my hands, it'd be 6 foot, 12 foot, then the neighbor would have 6 foot, 12 foot, thus 18 in between. Well, in this case, we're actually dealing with a situation where the properties to either side of our subject site both provide what I've called, for lack of a better term, their shorter side yard setback adjacent to the applicant's property. Property of the north has, I believe, it's a six foot side yard. Property of the south has about a six and a half, a little over six and a half foot side yard. So the idea of the alternating setbacks um, isn't really in place here. So that's the situation we find ourselves in, is that the applicant, um, his building envelope has essentially been restricted by placement of these other two existing residences, which limits, or again, restricts the area upon which he can build. Normally, an applicant, a resident, a homeowner, would be able to build within a larger building envelope. Because of the placement of those two homes, Mr. Klum is actually restricted even more so. So that's another point I think I want everyone to consider tonight. The last couple of things, um, there is an alternative, and that would be to modernize or even expand the existing residence. Uh, one of the issues that I point out in my letter with that option is that to expand this residence, they would also need a variance. In other words, they'd be in front of you anyway if they wanted to expand this because it's a non-conforming building. So they would need at least one variance if they wanted to try to modernize and create a little bit larger living space. As a result, they've decided to demolish, try to build from scratch, and try to improve the situation from the north property. Um, and then the closing point here is really getting back to a lot of these other points in your ordinance. Um, from, from our perspective, we don't feel that approval would have any adverse impacts on neighborhood character, surrounding properties, uh, public health, safety, and welfare, light and air, any of those other issues that are, uh, could be considered nuisance type conditions in your ordinance. Um, we don't really see occurring in this case, predominantly because we're eliminating nonconformity, actually improving the situation, uh, and then conversely we're matching the established condition on the south side. We're not actually getting worse, we're not encroaching farther, uh, but we're matching a condition that's already in place. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, that's all I really wanted to cover tonight. Happy to take any questions uh, if anyone has them, or I can turn the floor over to the applicant. All right, are there any questions? Uh, Brian, I, I have uh, one. If you, go, if you look at the, uh, the site plan, yep. yeah, and when you look at the distance, the 18 feet uh, distance between residents, is that a, a distance from structure to structure? It's, it's actually not. The, the technical application of that section of the ordinance is that it's a perpendicular line parallel to the property line such that if one home, if the homes were offset, thus they were not necessarily across from each other, you still technically have to provide an 18-foot spacing. And that's the issue that we find here is because of the, the, the proximity of the buildings, uh, it's actually the spacing up here is actually 14.2 feet based on that. When you actually get structure to structure, because of the angle of the house to the south, it's actually a little bit larger than that. Yeah, I was looking at that and yeah. you know, saying, uh, if I were the homeowner, I'd say I'd, I'd be interested in 
the structure that right next to my structure. Understood. Here, but here, that's that, not the case. Yeah, and I, I can I can pull up the exact uh, excerpt. I didn't bring my book up to the podium with me, but uh, it it does uh, it does specifically mention that it's essentially a line, you know, purple perpendicular to the property line, uh, and that's the way that it's it's always been applied. Uh, what we're talking about, I, I'm just reading it. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, it says, within the R1A and R1B zoning districts, principal and permitted, permitted uses on adjoining lots shall have a minimum spacing of 18 feet between principal structures measured perpendicular to the common lot line. Right. Yeah, so that, it, so it doesn't matter where those structures are. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I'm gonna again. It's, I know it's very difficult to see here, but uh, as you can see, the actual near point of structure to structure is more in the neighborhood of like 17 feet. Uh, still not at 18, but because of uh, because of these angles and because of the way the ordinance has historically been applied, uh, it's actually only a 14.2 foot spacing. Uh, are there any other questions? Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Now with that, uh, Mr. Klein, can we have you and the architect uh, come up and make your presentation? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, uh, I, can I say one thing? I, sure. Before you start, you're going to have to make a case of why we should uh, accept your proposal, your construction, uh, and not adhere strictly to the ordinance. So you're going to have to make that case. Sure. Well, first of all, I'd like to say um, I, I believe that your consultant um, articulated that very well. So, um, good job, Brian. Um, before, before you this evening, again, is is the side guard setback in, in the distance between the two principal structures. I, I think it's important to, to um, remember here, actually, if you take our total side yard, the combination, it's 19 and a half feet between from the south and, and, and the north side. So the, the ordinance, present ordinance right now, requires a minimum of 18 feet. So we're almost 10% over the uh, what is requested. Um, the issue, obviously, like Brian stated, is, is the distance between structures. When you take a look at the, the, the south side of, of, of the property line there, that's going to be where the existing driveway is. That's the, that's the garage. So that's a single story structure. Um, so if, if this was a, a two story structure that went you know, maybe 40 feet all along that property, I mean, it, it may create an issue. In this particular case, since these existing structures on a, rotated on an angle, they actually out of compliance. I mean, though the, the, it's, it's measured perpendicular is, is quite small for a short distance. So we believe that this is a, a very uh, realistic and, and uh, not a very aggressive uh, um, request for the, for the um, zoning uh, board of appeals. Um, we feel that this could be a win-win, especially if we're moving along the north side. It's out of compliance. We'll be making, bringing that back into compliance. Um, there's no other issue that we're here before you this evening, so we would ask for your favorable, favorable consideration for this. I'll turn it over to the owner. Thank you. I guess the only thing I'd like to add is, you know, I think Brian actually made the point that even if we're going to try to do something with the current structure, we would still have to come and make the same request. So um, I don't know any way around trying to take this property and turn it into something that's updatable and livable for our family without requesting some kind of variance from you. So uh, we feel this is uh, a realistic and, and hopefully a fair request and um, our family is just trying to move over here and become part of your community. So uh, we hope we can have a favorable ruling. Thank you. Um, did you consider any other options? Such as? Such as meeting the ordinance. 
Um, well, to do so, I think. Well, do you want to speak? I guess, like Brian stated, if we did absolutely nothing, we'd still be out of compliance. And whether we just put a porch on or did something, some some other uh, minor alterations to the existing structure, we'd still be here in front of you th um, this evening. Um, another thing to keep in mind, you know, when we talk about substantial justice, I, I would pretty much be pretty confident to say the overwhelming majority, well over probably 99% of the homes in this particular zoning district um, would have a minimum 18 foot um, between the homes. In this case, um, due to not not because of, of, of a self-inflicted um, hardship. The years and years ago, when the homes were built, um, having both sides, as as your consultant said, uh, having the shorter side, that six foot along each of the north and the south property line, um, that puts a real burden. That that makes the request twelve foot on the north, twelve foot on the south, to be in full compliance, which is a total of twenty four feet. So we think that that uh, you know that's that's thirty three thirty three percent more than the existing ordinance today. The existing ordinance is eighteen foot. So we, in order for us to comply with that, I think that's a pretty heavy burden that uh, a new potential home buyer in, in in your community would have to bear. I have a question. Um, how large is the proposed garage? The garage is, is, is approximately 24 by 28. And, and again, we haven't worked that out. There's some discussion about uh, uh, making it deeper, but right now it's it's about 24 foot wide. Thanks. How long, how old is your present house? Do you have any idea? I think the uh, house was built in 1955, right around there. And were the other to uh, build afterwards? I'm not sure about that. I believe so, but I'm not sure about that. Okay. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But in any case, you're caught in the middle. Correct. <laughs> middle. Uh, so, he, Mr. Cohn, you own the property now? So we do. He, you, you own the house? Yes. <coughs> do you have any... How far along are you? Are you in the architectural drawing stage? Where, where are you at? Um, we're we're about fifty percent, and we and we stopped to, to just to make sure that we can move forward. So you have a complete. So do you have a uh, a view, a front view, or any views that we can see about what it looks like? Uh, not yet. We're still working out there the floor plan. I mean, we have some 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 concept, but not here this evening. Part of the challenge with that is, without knowing what we can build on, it's very difficult to go forward with drawings, right? I mean, part of the commitment I have to make to Bob is that we know that we have the space to work with so that he can go forward with his drawings. So without that kind of commitment, it's kind of difficult for us to go forward with real in-depth plans at this point. Well, the, the, the change on the north side is going to be minimal. I mean, you don't have to do much. There's what, Brian, half a foot? What, what is it that they, the north done to conform on the north side? Yeah, it's about six inches. About six inches on the north side. On the south side, you'd have to do drawing revisions about three and a half feet. So that's your revisions that you So you're saying that you really, knowing that, that's not palatable to you. Well... I'd be happy. To, I mean, it, I guess worst case scenario. I mean, if if he he could pay me to do one set of drawings, and for some reason, if it was unfortunate, it didn't move forward, then it would have to go back and redo the drawings. I, um, you know, if it's you know a couple of feet, that's a substantial change. I mean, you're changing the structural, you're changing how far elevations, you're changing your your mechanical change and your electrical change, and just about everything there. So. Um, I think it was the prudent thing to do was was to stop and and then make sure that we get the the, the variance. Uh, your plan though was to use the existing footprint on the south side of the uh, property. 
Um, that, that's correct. The, the right now, the, the setback is, is approximately seven and a half feet, and we would go no closer than seven and a half feet. So we would absolutely not increase the out of compliance, and we would fix the out of compliance on the north side. I have a question. What is the current? What is the square footage of the current house? About fifteen hundred and fifty. Uh, so what, what you're basically saying is that uh, you don't want to complete the drawings until you get approval from the board, zoning board, saying go ahead with what with with that with the layout that you've given us. This layout that we see in front of us. Correct. Correct. And there are no way of changing it that would be acceptable to the homeowner. I'm not saying acceptable. I'm saying that meets the ordinances. I think on the north on the north side, I don't have a problem with the north side. It's the, it's the south side that uh, that's really you know where you have a three and a half foot variance. That's where that's where we that's what we look to mitigate. On the zoning board, the you look to mitigate those things. That, that's that's our. But you're saying basically that. that uh, you had you put fifty percent through with the architectural drawings, and what you see now is that it would be a hardship. I'm, I'm putting words in your mouth. I think. I don't yeah. <laughs> well, yes, I, I believe so. I mean, when we take a look at the the south side, I mean, again, right now we have not increased the the out of compliance. I mean, it's seven and a half feet. Um, again, if you take a look at the actual angle of the existing structures, it's not. The, the setback variance is not for the entire width of that of, of both structures so that they're both the one is skewed from from the other one but um, yes I mean I, I think right now just take a look at what the requirements are it's it's not like we're this is going to be a you know 3500 square foot house or something it's going to be something it's going to probably be smaller than that I mean if, if we were coming forward today we were going to build a five, six thousand square foot house. I, I would say, a, I probably wouldn't be here presenting and trying to dance and trying to sell it. Um, but um, that would be overly aggressive. In, in this particular case, it's 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 a modest house, and we believe that the setback variance that we're looking for is very modest. In fact, it's it's less than than, than both of the ones combined. Mr. Chair, what happens if? Uh, do you have a question? Yeah, you go ahead. Uh, what happens if the if the uh, project is denied? What, what, what's your next? What's your step? Um, at this point, I'm not sure to be honest. I don't know. I mean, we own the property, but if if uh, we determine that it's not going to be a project that's going to work for our family over here, I don't know. We might consider other options. I'm not sure at this point to be honest. We have another home in Woodhaven. I mean, we're going through some steps. So even to move forward with this project, a few things have to happen for our family anyway. But uh, we're taking those steps and are hoping to move forward. But um, if this was denied, I, I, we would just have to go back and review that. I don't know if I can answer that tonight. Okay. Yeah. I, <coughs> excuse me. This is still loud in my so I have to sit way back. Um, I'm inclined to agree with... Um, Mr. Borden's assessment that this does create a win-win and that we, um, I, I think it's a modest uh, proposal that you're putting before us. I, um, I also understand why you would not go forward with your plans. I think that's prudent. Um, we've had plenty of uh, applicants before us who've already made large investments in their plans and have had to uh, tread back. So um, I think that that was actually very, very thoughtful for you to do. And I'm inclined to um, agree that this is a, a good option both for you and for our community. I'm also interested though, since the adjacent homeowners are here, if they are prepared or wanted to make a statement for the ZBA to hear or consider. 
Yeah, I was going to get to that in the uh, I'm, I'm just saying that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure the uh, the appeal the appellants are have made their case. Uh, are, are you basically finished with your your presentation? I, I think yeah. everything's been presented. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any people in the audience that would like to address uh, the appeal? Uh, okay, you want to step forward and name and address? <coughs> Good evening. I'm George Williams. Uh, I'm at 22-533 West River. I'm the home directly north of the property. And I've looked at the plan and I have... Uh, no objections to what he's doing. I think he's doing a very positive thing, and I think it'll be very good for the neighborhood and and for the community. So you have no objection? No, 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 no. no. I, I think it's a, a very positive thing, and I like to see things positive happen in on uh, in Grozeal. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, anyone else has a, a comment? Uh, name and address. Oh, my name is Bill Florence. I live at two two six two three West River. I'm two two houses down uh, from the south. On the south side. Yeah, I'm not the neighbor to the south. I'm two doors down from the south. You know, I came because I I wasn't sure what you know kind of variance he was asking for. Because the thing you become concerned with is he going to tear it down and build a Bigfoot house, you know, and squeeze it right two inches from the property line because that that goes on a lot. I don't have any objections to what he's doing. I think, you know, it's, it's, I agree with George that it's thoughtful what he's doing. He's not encroaching anymore on, on the neighbor to the south, and he's improving it to the north, and the house doesn't look really square footage-wise and pretty much equal to what's already there. I mean, I, I've i been in the house, and I know he does have to take because that house is not livable. You can, there, there is no question you can't upgrade that house. It's got to come down. Mm -hmm. um, it's not livable. It's been vacant too long. Uh, after the owner died, uh, the daughters, you know, lived in North and lives in North Carolina. There was nobody watching over it, so uh, you—that's the only option he has. Okay, so basically, you're you're not in opposition. No, no I'm not in opposition with it. I, I now that I see what he's doing, I I thought he, uh, he approached it very well, and he's not he's 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 not uh, he's improving it to the north, and he's not making it any worse to the south. Okay, well, thank you very much. Okay. Back to the table. Are there any other comments from the board? What, what, did yeah. Yeah, did you want to make a comment? I'm his wife, and my only comment is that I used to be a friend of Marge's, and I know that with the property the way it was, the property south sits down, okay, and their property sits up. So you've got a difference in variances in the height of the property line. And I know that you can hardly even fit a wheelbarrow back where, you know, when you're driving, you know, because I help Marge all the time, and you could hardly even get a wheelbarrow back between the, uh, you know, the one house. And with the house that's next to us, Every time they needed work or a cable truck needed to get in or a tree truck needed to get in, they'd always use our driveway to do it. So, you know, I, I don't care what they're doing, but I'm just saying that, you know, these houses that are squeezed in to the edges of the property line, they can't get anything back there. So, you're... I'm kind of against it, but, you know... You're, that's what I'm hearing. Affect. I'm hearing that yeah. you, uh, your basic opposition is... The access to the back of the property, there's not enough room for access to the back of the property. Correct. How do you get a cable truck back there to work on the, any of the trees or anything like that? They're always going in our yard to get to the neighbor's house, the, the neighbor north of us. So how do they get a tree truck or anything back in there when you've got a fence between the two houses existing? And then the Reedy's house is sitting down. So you've got, you know, their driveway and everything's down on a hill, and Marge's property was up level, so you couldn't get anything back there. So that was my opposition. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, do you want to address that? If I may, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um,
need to keep in, keep in mind over on the north side where it's 11 and a half foot existing setback we'd be making that 12 foot so we do have at least one side that is comply with the, with the 12 foot so I mean that's yeah, I know we, there we maximize we you know we, we have maximized the, the north side for that so I mean if it was six foot and six foot or seven and a half and seven and a half I would agree that would be uh, very challenging yeah. and and she's right that over on the south side that there is an elevation difference I would think that if anybody was going to be going back they would not go along that side where there's an elevation difference that'd be more on the flat property line to the north yeah, I noticed there was a lot of shrubbery, old shrubbery around along that line too. So you know that maybe encroaches maybe somewhat on that. You're absolutely right. And then during the construction process, some of that would go away. But there's full intent to come back with with the landscape plan. Okay. So, and, and I guess just looking at the big picture here, we talk about a win-win. This is an opportunity. You want a for somebody to come into your community, make a substantial investment, uh, um, be proud of their investment, live in here bringing uh, three additional kids into your school system so you know that that's bringing roughly about eight thousand dollars per, per per pupil there so I mean I think this is really is a win-win and, and I'm being perfectly honest and well sometimes when I come in front of you and I have to try to sell a project I mean this is very this is a very very modest request sometimes when I have to go there it's very difficult again if somebody's going Forward and they're looking to build a five six thousand square foot house that's two and a half stories just a big giant footprint you know that would be so uh, again the favorable consideration would be appreciate thank you yeah now this this is um, when you talk about the uh, exterior of the of the new house uh, you're talking about the garage one story the main living structure is going to be two stories well the, if I start from the north the north side was going to be where the master suites at and that is a one story and then the, the center part where you see where there's a little offset there there would be two stories and then we would have a bonus room in, in, in the garage and the garage would be over on the south side so we need to get access from the two-story part into to the bonus room above the garage but so you'd start off at from the street level it'd be like a you know somewhat symmetrical where you'd have a, a story on the north two story in the center and then another story story and a half on, on the south side yeah so i guess the, the question is uh you know you don't want a, a big house struck you know if you're driving down westward road you, you you're looking at it and you say oh wow I mean, that's not gonna that happen. that's not going to be the case at all so I, I think if you go just a couple doors down to the north you might come to that conclusion you might say, well, in, in this case, this, it's not going to be the case. It's not going to be, you know, just a mass wall straight up, two stories, big tall roof. That's not the case right here. They're going to start off with something that's going to be, um, something that's going to really be in harmony with the adjacent uh, homes in that area. Uh, anything else that you want to? Not at this time. I'm, if okay. anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to address them. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions on the board? Yes, for a motion. Uh, okay, hearing none, can we uh, get a motion for this uh, for this appeal? Bob, uh, I'd like to make a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve Appeal 12-004 due to the elimination of the variance on the north side due to the fact that he's using the same footprint on the south side, which means that there's no additional encroachment, and it is an improvement to the neighborhood and to the community. Second. Uh, we have a second. Do uh, we have any comments relative to the motion? Uh, hearing none, can we vote? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those? Carry no closing uh, opposition. The uh, appeal passes. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Grossfield. Mr. Chair. Uh, yes. I, I just want to um, make a quick statement, Mr. Borden. Your presentation to this body this evening was exceptional. Thank you. Very helpful, informative to the public. 
just very, very good, very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, Brian, Brian sent me an email and he said, can I do it? And I, I looked at it and I said, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do it again. Yeah. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. As, as, long, as long as, you know, as a group, you guys are, are okay, that's, that's my normal procedure for a host of reasons. We haven't done it that way here, but I think moving forward, we'll, we'll go with this until you guys say, look, you got enough TV time, you can stop talking no. now. It's very, because what the ZBA does is often um, obscure to people who yes. are, are watching our meetings or who are taking part in the process. This is helpful to them as well. Right. Yeah, and, and it's good to do it every time. Yeah. So Fair enough. that's the instructions. Do it every time. Do it every time. <laughs> you, you, are, you are free to change your minds, too, at some point. So. <laughs> well, you may just want to make the font size a yeah. little bit bigger. <laughs> there, there are, I, will, I won't belabor this for you. There are some, uh, some program compatibility issues. My format got a little messed up transferring from my computer to yours, but we'll, we'll get that worked out. Yeah. Yeah. I know you Nice. It's the first thing I noticed. Okay, I think uh, we, we finished the appeal of 122004. Are there any other comments or miscellaneous that we want to cover today? I know this morning that we still have on the, on, on, uh, the docket uh, getting some training, but we haven't. What we decided to do there, I think, is to wait till we get a full board before we. No, actually, Brian was going to be presentation tonight. Oh, we adjourn. No, I, I, I think what we'll do is we'll wait for the board, full board, and we'll go for the board. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, I think well, with that, uh, we have no public comment, and I think we can ask for a uh, motion to adjourn. So move to adjourn. Second. Uh, vote. Aye. 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 Motion, uh, motion carried. Uh, meetings adjourned. Thank you.